putting in their uh, their tag. Oh, it's um, we got G Weasley coming up to play, going up against uh, Geki Zaki. Oh, oh, Zaki. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the DDD main. You know, I was just talking to uh, a local DDD main, Tortilla the Pun, and DDD okay. mains. They were they were never under any illusions back in Smash Four, right? Like they loved the character, but they were like, "Yeah, this character's terrible. Like, don't follow my footsteps. Don't pick up this character." I was talking to him. He's like, "Hey, DDD, actually kind of broken in this game. Just like DDD in a hush is, whisper." Yes, yeah. DDD is actually a little weird because um, obviously Gordos are still Gordos for the most part. Um, this character can do some crazy stuff at low percent, so you can get like stuff like short hop, fa uh, not fair, short hop nair. Could you imagine short hop <laughs> fair up tilt? Oh god, no, but short hop nair like double up tilt and like he can kind of keep the pressure going from there. So, um, DD has never of all the heavies, he's kind of just like kind of been in the middle. Obviously, he was really good in brawl, like he had the chain grab, smash four, a lot to be desired. But in smash <laughs> ultimate, though, he's certainly bringing it back with the vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I think one of the big things that really helped DD is that. Back in uh, Smash 4, his Gordos, the hurt box on them was bigger than the hit box. So any character can contest them and send them back at him. In this game, it's the hit box that's larger than the hurt box. So if a character doesn't have good disjoint or projectiles, they have to hold all those Gordos. And it makes his zoning game really potent in a lot of matchups. And I've been the victim of like hitting a Gordo back to DDD and then DDD like inhales it and shoots it back or he like yeah. catches it on his hammer and throws yeah. it back and I like die at like 2%. I'm like, yo, what is this character, Sakurai? Like, I'm on to you, man. You're making all your characters busted in these games, man. It's I'm, it's I'm on to you. Sakurai voices DDD. That's fair. So like, that's he has to show up, right? It's, you're right, it's, you're his, right. Own, it's his own representative there. You're right. Yeah. I don't blame him, man. Of all the time Sakurai spends in a game, you should definitely make your characters good. And also uh, the, the fact that all the characters in Hales in this game actually kind of act as reflectors too, right? Like you can eat any projectile and spit it right back at your opponent. You catch your opponent with the inhale, you actually can combo into up tilt if they mash out of it. So you actually oh, you have confer heck. Yeah. There's there's a lot of weird things about this character in this game that I've only just recently found out. And I, I mean what better representatives to bring them here to the States than Zaki himself, the guy who beat uh, MK Leo's cloud at Hyrule Saga with just DDD. That was back in Smash 4. That character is actually OD. <laughs> All right, man, we're hovering over Peach's castle right now, man. Don't get me started, because no. <laughs> if you know me back at home. You know, I'm super casual. I'll take a me gunner uh, pick. I'll turn some items on. We'll go to we'll go to uh, Peach's Castle all day, man, and really turn it up. You truly obviously, enjoy every flavor in this game. Every flavor, man. But you know what, though? Uh, these players, obviously, a little bit more competitive than, than myself. So <laughs> let's see what we get, man. Moving to the game number one. We're at the character select screen. We talked about King DDD. I wouldn't be actually upset if I seen that. My roommate actually plays a lot of DDD. So I've had my uh, I had my fair share of DDD ass whoopings, <laughs> and I'm talking from the receiving. And I've received a lot of DDD ass whoopings in the past. But I play Snake and Link. Link DDD, you can say what you want about it. Snake kind of struggles versus heavies a little bit, but this is Wolf though. Completely different story, man. As we jump right into game number one, Town and City. Let's get it. This is the largest blast on stage, especially off of the top. So when you have DDD, he's already such a heavy character and a fast faller. It's going to make murdering him rather difficult for Weasley. So he's going to need to do a really good job of staying in control, especially when he pops Zaki into the air. That's right. Smart stuff right there, man. He's seen that Gordo was coming. He just goes for the neutral special. You could tell originally his first instinct was like the short hop ferret, but he was like, why do that when my blaster is busted? <laughs> Yeah, I can shoot the Gordo back or at least stop him from approaching and confirming off. I mean, it. hell, even if it gets close, he can use the active hitbox on the, the neutral special and knock it back. But regardless, man, him himself getting knocked off stage here, man, versus Zaki. There's the up air. Not quite enough, though. That almost killed it. He only lived because it was a town and city ceiling. Otherwise, it's going to kill Wolf at like 90%. Oh, that was smart stuff. He knew that he was going to do a neutral get up because he didn't want to get hit by the Gordo. The minute he seen that, he went for down tilt, man. Yeah. Like one step ahead of here at the competition, man. It was, it was so good because the Gordo was bouncing high, so that limited Weasley from doing a jump getup. Yes. And then you had Zaki waiting at the roll distance, so he didn't want to roll up either. And it just covered everything. That's right, man. Definitely had himself covered at all points of time, man. This man looked like AT&T right now. <laughs> the coverage was real. Okay, forward tilt. This is still not a bad deficit here for my man Weasley. 108%, he can certainly make magic happen, but he has to make sure he stays on stage. The main objective here for Zaki, he knows that in terms of fighting in the neutral versus Weasley, that's not gonna be the easiest task in hand. You're gonna have to play the Wolf's weaknesses. And his biggest and most glaring weakness after being just combo food is his offstage presence. Yeah, especially his recovery, right? If he goes for the Wolf Flash, he's gonna have a real hard time because he doesn't snap to the ledge immediately. Makes some easy pickings and he has to do it at just the same timing, the same placing. Otherwise, he's just not coming back. Absolutely. Okay, there it is. There's the up tilt. Okay, good DI right here for my man Weasley. 
Drexley air dodging away, but the four tilt, very deceptively good, man. It's really good at just covering, uh, you know, jumping Zen, and then of course like rolls in as well too, which is an area that Wolf really wants to be in. He's trying to get up close and personal uh, here on Zaki. Zaki's okay. doing a really good job baiting Weasley to jump in as well, and then just weaving slightly out of range and trying to punish with the hammer. That's right. Okay, here it is. Nice, the pivot for it tilt once more. Uh-oh, watch yourself. Out into the magnifying glass, he goes once more. That's the scary thing about the way Zaki's controlling space as well with the Gordos, is he bounces it up and then runs under it when his opponent is in the corner because they can't run through DDD, and if they try to jump over him, they get caught with the Gordo. <laughs> what the? See, all right, all right, man. All right, G-Pick. He, he up air through the legend stage, and that was enough to take it. I mean, I know, like, I know Wolf is easy to combo, but god dang. <laughs> All right, man, that was some that, big great stuff right here from my man Azaki playing like Takis right now, man, heating up this match. Let's see what we get here, man, as this thing kind of wraps up. Weasley right now, only 0% on board. Still very far from undoable, but he's going to have to play safe. I get it. You know, Wolf is a very easy character to play, very flow charty for the most part. But I think to be this late in, into pools and slash into bracket and, and Prime Saga, you know the Wolf matchup like the back of your hand. Oh, absolutely. And considering how much this character has grown in flavor of the month and these later, uh, between March and April. Oh, beautiful catch with the up strong. Like just covering uh, not only the jump get up, but also like, you know, the neutral one and the roll. Hmm. Just different timings. Hmm. Nice. There, did you say up strong? You, you've been you've been playing some other platform fighters, G-Pick. I'm on to you. <laughs> I'm on to you, G-Pick. What you been playing? You've been playing, uh, you've been playing Rivals, right? Is that what you yeah. play? I've been okay. playing Rivals and Center Burners, basically Wolf. That's, so. what, that's right. <laughs> if y'all didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, my man G-Pick is a very well-rounded platform fighter commentator, man. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. But if you didn't know King DDD was kind of good in here, man, I feel bad for you, man. But better to learn this way than learning on the sticks versus King DDD, man. This character obviously not phenomenal but certainly much better than what he used to be, man. Good stuff right here as we move right into game number two. And honestly, Weasley's been doing a solid job keeping it pretty close. Zaki is a terrifying player once he gets his read on you, but Weasley's been managing to, to sort of skate through situations, find little hits here and there, and more importantly, he's been taking stocks at reasonable defense. This uh -huh. is DD. This is one of the super heavyweights in the game, but yes. Weasley's been making him look just as light as anybody else. It's And that's the mark of a true competitor, man. I mean, obviously, to play King D, like, you know, we, we talk about, like, getting late into pools and late in the bracket. You, like, back in Smash 3, you run into a Cloud or Bayonetta. You're like, okay, this is cool. Imagine being late in the pools or, like, in Top 32, you ran into a King DDD. You're like, oh, dang. Like, if you've been playing this character like this and you're on winner side, I'm afraid because you know something I don't. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like, okay, he probably knows this matchup better than me. Just, right. just to start out with. We have okay. actually Kalos as the counter pick here. Another very large blast on stage. I think Weasley is trying to maximize his own survivability, but he's choosing a stage with no platforms for Saki to use as refuge when he's being juggled. This uh, this stage is actually really awkward because, like, obviously you have a lot of room to work with here, which can actually uh, benefit both of these two characters too. Like, obviously now Wolf can play the long range game and kind of play like a weenie. But for the most part here, though, Zaki has some very clear advantages too, man. Beautiful stuff right there. Short hot back air. And oh, oh, Tyler he Perry. Knows. Tyler Perry. Trying to find himself another back here, but once again, Zaki just being kind of uncontested on this second stock on Weasley and catching on perfectly with a jump swallow. He's just going to town on Weasley. That's right, man. The upper right now trying to play the floor is loud, but that's a little bit more difficult here versus King DDD since he's blessed with a, a couple jumps, not like most characters in the game. A bit of a trade here, 138%, and we're hunting wolves this season, man. Not a good spot to be in at all if you're my man Weasley. Zaki is like actually a ping pong champion, right? With the way he just rebounded that Gordo off the platforms and hit Weasley's recovery, that was nuts. That's right, man. Hundred, uh, excuse me, not 100, 95.9%, .9%, man. I read that percent all wrong, man. <laughs> Math was never my strong suit, though. Creative writing, that's a different story. No way. Oh, it's still safe, though, on Whiff. Nice stuff. Using a neutral special here to get the Gordo out of the way. He's been taking a lot of unnecessary percent, and he got his stock taken from some of those Gordos, too, man. He's figuring out a way to try to nullify it. I hope I he doesn't get three stock, though. I think one of Weasley's ideas with the stage is to use those platforms near the ledge to recover away from the Gordos, but he so far hasn't really been using it. He's just been kind of waking up into them instead. All right, dash attack. Really have to watch your options versus DDD, man, because since DDD is so long, like kind of like how you talked about before the match started, you think you can kind of get in for free, but that's not the case here, ladies and gentlemen. The up air for his troubles, close it out, and my man Weasley's going to take a trip over into the loser side, ladies and gentlemen.